never ever underestimate the power of Allah. You know, there, there was a sheikh who mentioned this in Saudi Arabia and there was a doctor that visited him from Pakistan and told him a story that happened to him. So he says, what happened to me? He says, he, the doctor who's speaking is a top neurologist. One of the top doctors in Pakistan or, you know, a very, very good doctor, very hard to meet. It's said that perhaps you would have to wait months on end before you can get an appointment to see him. So what happened is, he says, I was flying from one city to another, a very busy man flying quite often within the, the country and perhaps even outside. And he says, suddenly, the clouds built, the clouds built up. Huge clouds and the lightning started striking and it started pouring and there was lots of turbulence and one of the engines was struck and it was damaged. So we had to land, we had to land. And so what happened is, the landing was at a nearby little airport or a little strip and so on. And when they landed there, it was a remote area. How are you going to repair this aircraft? A few people who were on it, it was a small plane. They were, uh, you know, quite surprised because they landed it in such a remote place. No one's there to repair it. They would have, have to wait, definitely. So the doctor asks the captain or the pilot that, you know what, uh, how long are you going to be? He says, no, we're going to be quite long. Well, I need to get to that area. Look, he says, it's just a three hour drive with your, by vehicle. So why don't you just go by road? And you know, you can go there and get there. He says, okay, good idea because this is going to take long. So he decides to go on one of the tri shows, you know, in Pakistan, one of the areas, wherever it was, and he jumped in. And as they started progressing, the clouds built again. And the lightning was striking, and the rain started pouring. And it was pouring so much that the, the vehicle could not move much more because of the mud and because of everything else. And so it was quite an open area with a bit of farmland. And, and after a while, they realized, look, we're not getting anywhere. There's a little house here. Why don't we just go there? We can read our salah. Perhaps we can, you know, see, have a bit of a meal or whatever else. And they decided to knock the door. Strange people, strange land, far off, out in the rurals. And so he knocks the door and he's got his little bag and everything. And he walks in. Uh, an old lady happened to answer the door after a while. And she, they spoke to her saying, look, this is what has happened. And we're going from so and so to so and so, and we just want a place, we want to read salah and so on. And she said, No problem, you can come in. She had a little musalla, a little sajjada, and she had a little baby on the side, or not a baby, but a child. And the child, every little while, she's actually checking on the child, and she's sitting on that musalla, making dua and reading her own salah. These people fulfilled their salah, did whatever they had to. Uh, and w when they were about to leave, they spoke to the old lady, saying, You know, thank you very much, Jazakumullah khair, and so on. And, you know, uh, we're going, uh, what's, what's happening to this child, you know? So the woman says, look, the child is an orphan. And the child is unwell, not well at all, very sick. And uh, we've been to all the doctors around. We've been to all the doctors around. And subhanallah, I'm the grandmother of this child. The doctors have told us that there is only one specialist around. One specialist around who can help this child in. And we tried to make an appointment, but they asked us to come six months later. And it's far away. I've been making dua to Allah ever since that day. Ya Allah, make it easy for us. Child is sick. Child is sick. Make it easy for us, Ya Allah. So the man says, what's the name of that specialist? So the granny says, it's Dr. Ishan. Immediately this doctor burst into tears. He burst into tears. Straight away, he burst into tears. Why are you crying? Your dua has just been accepted. For your dua, the thunder came, the lightning came, the engine struck, we came down, we came on the road, the rain came again and stopped us and so on. And do you know what? The rain only stopped after the question was asked. Now it happened. And now the woman starts crying. Subhanallah. <laughs> And the doctor himself is telling the story saying, that was me, it happened to me, he says. And he says, I learned that Allah's armies are beyond limits. Allah uses whatever he wants to get what he wants done. So, where in the wildest of the dreams of this person would they have felt or believed that the top man whom it is semi impossible to see without big, big appointments would actually be driven all the way to the door, knock the door, come in here, read some salah, and they would have to serve the child here. Amazing. Wallahi, it brings tears to the eyes. 
But the reason I share it with you, every one of us has needs for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just keep calling. Just have yaqeen. Have conviction. If it is meant, it will definitely come in your direction. You know, we use the term by hook or crook, but I don't want to use that today. I want to tell you by the mercy and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will happen. It will come to pass. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he open our doors. May he grant us all shifa. And may he make us firm believers that for him, nothing is impossible.